What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am clearly not on a step mill. I'm in the visitor's locker room at AT&T Stadium, where we got to talk with the first batch of Big 12 coaches. That includes Lincoln Riley, Matt Campbell, Neil Brown, Gary Patterson, and Chris Kleiman. I got to ask them some really interesting questions. I also got to ask a couple of players about their hair. I got to ask them about my all-time Big 12 conference teams. And, well, some of them took issue with a number of players. We're going to actually give you that in another upload. But I thought it was really interesting when I asked Lincoln Riley, am I going to get to see Oklahoma in a black jersey in my lifetime? The man said, you know, we're always up for some surprises. Ah! So you're going to hear that from him. Also, Jeremiah Hall, outstanding. Nick Benito was outstanding. I really enjoyed getting to talk with them. I actually really got to talk a bit about Baker Mayfield at a new angle, one I hadn't heard before, coming from Jeremiah. Some really interesting conversations with players from Kansas State, players from West Virginia, players from Iowa State, players from Texas Christian, and of course, players from, well, <laughs> my alma mater. But we talk about this. Like, we're going to have this discussion in another upload, right? Because now all of a sudden y'all are forgetting where I went to school, but we'll get to that. All right. I want to kick it now to my conversation with Lincoln Riley. And again, since you're here, five-star review, subscribe to the channel, follow us on the social accounts. That is Facebook, that is Instagram, that is Twitter. We are everywhere you want to be, and I hope you really enjoy it. Let me know what you think. I'm here with Coach Lincoln Riley. Coach, how you doing? I'm great. How about you? I'm good. Uh, I want to start by giving you an opportunity to talk about, well, how I might have cooked my brisket because in the backyard of my house, it's all about how it tastes. I'm not one of these competition brisket eaters or cookers. So please let us know, how did it taste? <laughs> it was fantastic. Okay. I've cooked, oh, probably 50 in my life and one of the better ones I've had. I may not be a good photographer, but we, we, can, we can cook it up a little. I like that. I like that. I appreciate that, Coach. A uh, little bit more serious here. Have you ever seen another quarterback with a natural arm of Spencer Rattler? Uh, I mean, I've, we've been around some good ones, obviously, so I don't know that I wanna, would want to say never have, but I mean, he, he has a extraordinarily talented, you know, arm and ability to throw the football. I mean, there's no, no question about it. He can, you know, make all the throws, all the different arm angles, you know, has the, the confidence, the feel, the power, the touch, kind of all that, that, that it takes to be a great, a great thrower. And, and he's still, and he's still improving, you know, I would, you know, expect him to, you know, throw the ball quite a bit better this year than he did last year. But there's no question he's a natural talent. In evaluating quarterbacks, uh, I've heard you speak at length about what you're looking for. But when I see this dude throw a football behind his back 40 yards down the field, I keep thinking to myself, all right, when am I going to see this again? And all of a sudden now I'm seeing the kids just like omega level mutants throwing 70 yard bombs at 16 years old. Are you ever looking at some of these guys and perhaps thinking, okay, are we putting a little bit too much emphasis on what they can do with a football as opposed to what they can do between their ears? Uh, probably so. You know, right now it's, you know, the social media driven world and everybody can see a video. They can see a amazing jaw dropping throw or a trick throw or whatever. And at the end of the day, that, that really doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's if you can't process, if you can't learn, if you can't you know, rally the troops and inspire. I mean, if you can't do those things and how you throw the balls are relevant. So, I mean, I think you're, you're looking for the total package. I mean, of course you want, you know, the talent to be able to physically do the things that you're coaching, but it's still at the end of the day comes down to what you can process and what you can do. And then, and then the intangible side of leading and inspiring. And so, you know, we're looking for guys that we think can do it all. Uh, it's sometimes a tough evaluation, especially the between the ears side, uh, but, that's, that's what we get paid to do. Goodness me. Uh, I continue to look at what your quarterbacks in particular do, and, and I marvel at them. And Spencer's one of those kids for me. A um, little less serious here. What was the last job you had that had nothing to do with football? Mm. Probably, God, I'm trying to think. Probably working at my dad's. Uh, cotton compress and warehouse um, kind of a farming agricultural type job when I was in uh, when I was in high school now I'm interested yeah what does that entail 
Man, a lot. Uh, driving forklifts, uh, hauling bales of cotton around, uh, re-roofing buildings. Um, you know, tough, hard work. You know, kind of some straight up, legit manual labor. But it was uh, it was good for me. I my parents started me working kind of a true job when I was pretty young, and uh, I didn't like it at the time. <laughs> I think my dad paid me like two fifty an hour, which I still say is like some type of like. <laughs> child uh, employment law, law law or something like that it was uh, I still joke with him about it but honestly it it was good for me to learn the value of hard work and and being a, a good employee and a good um, you know being able to handle my business at a young age I I didn't appreciate it then but I probably do more now ballpark it what age is this I probably started going pretty heavy 11 12 somewhere in there yeah. Right on. Yeah. Um, what are the chances that I, in my lifetime, get to see Oklahoma wear a black jersey? <laughs> uh, you never know. Okay. You know we pull some surprises out, so you never know. Goodness. Hey, hey, not now now my interest is through the roof, man. <laughs> uh, no, I. it's an issue that gets a lot of conversation via mm -hmm. social, and I know you know this, but – one of the things that I like about OU and one of the reasons that I think we have these conversations is the tradition means that much. Absolutely. Right? And to move away from that is difficult for some folks. As a person that's contemporary in my age, I think we're about three years apart, how have you been able to really straddle the line when it comes to tradition versus what you know you probably need to do to push forward the school and the program? Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a topic that's brought up a lot um, it, and it comes it kind of comes to light in so many different instances just because and like you said it's a blessing I mean the the history the tradition all that this program has done for so long it's you love to have it and and but there is sometimes some push and pull between uh, honoring the past and being proud of our traditions and also you know pushing forward into a new age and continuing to be on the cutting edge and so you know I think we've we don't want to shy away from um, pushing forward, but we also we always want to keep our traditions in mind. I think is maybe the best way to put it. So um, you know, those things are we're, we we carefully look at it uh, on an issue like like you know jersey colors and uniform combos. I mean, I'm glad we're not one of these that have 5,000 different combos and don't have anything that you can really tie yourself to or tie the program to. I love I love what we have, but um, you know we've. We've branched out a few other times before, and I'm sure we'll continue to do that as time goes on. And thinking about continuing to stay on the cutting edge, and I mean, obviously, you know, the deal with Jordan has made me very happy as I wear <laughs> a lot of Jordan era gear. But the thing that I think you don't get enough credit for is how good you are in recruiting, in all aspects of recruiting, how you built out the staff to help get those kids through the door and show them what Oklahoma is about. How did you come? understand what you needed to do and when you needed to do it to really elevate the level of recruiting in Oklahoma? Well, it's always been something that I was very interested in. And, and as you do at your different stops and different jobs, different people you work for and programs you're in, you, you, you're able to sit back and learn and see how things are going. And you're able to you know form some of your own opinions of you know how you think things could improve or how you think things will evolve as time goes on. And I've always enjoyed trying to be, you know, think ahead. And, and I think having a staff that also appreciates that we, we want to do things that people have never done before. You know, we want to push the issue. We want to be on the cutting edge. And we've got a staff in mind that, that thinks that way and is hungry to continue to improve and not just hang on, well, this is how we've always done it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a, it's a fun, creative room, you know, and everybody's expected to bring new ideas. Everybody's expected to spend time on it and really bring something to the table. and. You know, we, we get these big ideas and we, we find a way to make them work. And uh, it's been it's been a blast. We pulled off a lot and I'm sure we'll we'll continue to, to push the issue. Uh, it's a hit. It's a hit with the fans. It's a hit with the kids I talk to. And man, uh, it's been a wonder to behold for me just watching it from the outside. Thank you. Uh, Coach, I'm going to move to some compilation questions. These are fun. Okay. And the idea is something like rapid fire. Okay. So first thing that comes to your mind, uh, say nice or say three nice things about Texas. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll take that. Um, who do you think has the best uniforms in college football and you can't say your own? 
Ooh, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. Uh, yeah, I, I can't do it. Okay. I can't do it. Uh, Too loyal. All right. Which fictional football player would you most want to join your team? Forrest Gump. Really? Boom. Okay. Kickoff return. There we go. Oh, so so we're get we're going for six every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to call a play if I got him right. Hardest hit you ever took or delivered? Um, I took a couple of pretty good ones. I, I gave a couple. I had a. I got. It's actually the one that ended up busting up my shoulder and and uh, yeah, probably in some way or form kind of shaped the my path. Uh, but yeah, when I was a sophomore, I. Threw, threw a ball to a receiver and he dropped it or kind of bounced off his hand, should have caught it, got intercepted. I was not happy and it came down the sideline and I I had a, I, I cleaned him up pretty good on the sideline and in the process busted my shoulder up. So I paid for it a little bit as well. It'd be hard to say you regret that hit though, right? Yeah, you never know what would have happened, but I, I certainly can't complain. Okay. Last question for you, coach. Um, I think this is a little bit easier. Who's the best dressed player on your team? Ooh, there'd be a lot of, a lot of competition on this. Um, I gotta go with uh, man. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm cycling through here. Man, I, no matter who I say, you realize I'm gonna get like beat up over this, like 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 big time. Well, I, I got you back. Yeah, I got you back. I'm gonna go with uh, I'll go with one of my boys in the secondary. I'll go with my man Justin Harrington. How about that? Okay. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. I like it. We got several guys that that that, that do a, that do a nice job. Don't, don't I know it? Yeah. Don't I know it? Because they will give comments to me and others about how we dress and how we look. So I know you're paying attention. Uh, my goodness, and and the walk up right to the state. I'm always looking forward to it because the guys do such an amazing job taking photos, and some of them are out there wearing jerseys. I didn't know they knew the. That's right. That's right. Uh, real quick, coach. I want you to take a look at this. Okay. These are my all-time offensive and defensive teams. Now, if there's somebody you think that I missed, you got to tell me who you're taking off. Oh, Orlando Brown's got to be on this. Okay. All right. Who are we, who are we taking off? Well, Leonard Davis for okay. sure. Okay. Now, Leonard was a beast, too, uh, an absolute beast. So, you certainly couldn't go wrong either way. But my man Orlando is something pretty special. Defense on the other side. All right. I was about to say, Roy Williams better be on. <laughs> <laughs> if he's not. Hey, coach, oh, I'm from man. Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, that's right, man. This is, a, I mean, the front, the front is fantastic. There's been, uh, it's hard to leave, uh, gosh, hard to leave Tommy and some of the guys off like that, hey, man. It's been tough. It was, I mean, this is a this is a great defense, though, right here. I mean, this is, uh, this is pretty phenomenal. Well, that's the thing, right, is that, the idea being that you could put together, I think, five or six of these, and you could not be wrong. The funny thing is I think I coached against every single guy, <laughs> either either coached or coached against every single guy on this list, which is pretty cool. Yeesh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Been around for a while. Uh, coach, so we got Zeus. We need to add Zeus. All right. I can take that. Zeus. I can take that. Coach Lincoln Riley, thank you so much for joining us, Coach. You uh, got it. This has been so much fun. Enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm here with Oklahoma fullback Jeremiah Hall and linebacker Nick Benito. How you guys doing? I'm good, man. Doing Happy well. to be here. Oh, man. Uh, so, like, my first question is for you, Jeremiah, right? you coming into your fifth year at Oklahoma, and I want to know, were you drafted to come here because Caleb Kelly could not get out of his wheelchair <laughs> to be here today with us? <laughs> That's the ranking old-timer on this team. Man, you know, one of the old heads had to be here, so uh, I'm filling in that role. Right, that's what's <laughs> up, man. What is it like for you to be one of the elder statesmen on this team? You know, the older I've gotten in this program, the more I take pride in just being the old head, you know, being the guy that's had some experience, being the guy that can direct the young guys. And, you know, from a coaching perspective, you have a little bit more – faith in the old head you know he's been here he knows the ropes so I'm, I'm glad I can I can be that person right, that's what's up. Nick what's it been like for you to be able to come dudes like Jeremiah and ask questions you might not ask your coaches um it's real important to me because you know like you said guys like Jeremiah CK you know another guy like Brian Mead you know they've mm -hmm. seen everything you know they, they've been through it all so you know just you know coming to them you know about stuff that you know, even off the field, you know, that can be really important to me. Just, you know, it helps me, it helps the young guys around the program. So uh, they're definitely a joy to have. So I got a 
real critical, uh, let's call it a nomenclature question to ask you. What the heck is the difference between a rush in and an outside linebacker? Um, I, I guess you can kind of treat it the same, but I feel like a rush end, you know, we, we, we do a little bit more rush than a normal outside linebacker mm -hmm. would. But as far as responsibilities, I, I feel like it's kind of the same. I just feel like maybe the rush end, I guess, is just a cooler name for outside linebacker maybe. Then. No, I can get with that. I can get with that. <laughs> Jeremiah, it's a similar question. I introduced you as a fullback because short, tight, to the point, H-back, I don't even know if that's something y'all using anymore. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> what do you think you do? You know, as long as the people know I make plays, it's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what you call me. Yeah. No, that's what's up. No, because, like, the, the thing that I'm always uh, pointed to when I ask other people that know scheme is, yo, man, the fullback's going to be wide open on this. And I said, how do you know that? Because they, you know, we, we built this coverage to occupy everybody. We know we're going to be out. And then here you come kind of skidding out free. What is it like for you to be in these meetings where – Let's say Coach Riley has drawn something up and he's looking at you going, you're going to be wide open here. It's always fun. You know, Coach Riley's a creative mind. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really been an honor just to be in this offense and to be around him. But when I have those plays and my time comes, I'm, I'm grateful for it. That's what's up. Uh, Nick, I'll, it's interesting for me to watch you come up because uh, as Jeremiah would tell you, I'm a close watcher of Oklahoma football, right? And... First, the play you made in 2019, right? And then the season that you had last year. What clicked for you? Um, I, I just felt like, you know, that game gave me a lot of confidence. And, and just, you know, playing with confidence, it can do so much for your game. And just knowing what you're supposed to do and just knowing that you can do it at a high level, it, it really can change, a, you know, how a person plays. And I'm pretty sure you've seen that with a lot of players on our defense. You know, one pers uh, person specifically is Isaiah Thomas, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been around him for three years, and I've just seen the, the, the amount of confidence that he played with last year. And, you know, he just walks around the building a little differently. So I definitely say just the confidence factors. See, now you're going to gas me up because I went to Tulsa Memorial, <laughs> yeah, right? Like he, you know what I mean? That's, that's my guy. That's my guy. I'm glad to hear Isaiah yes, is that dude. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah, you know this would not be an Oklahoma interview if I didn't ask you about the young kids, yep. okay? So I'm going to point to a player. I'm going to give me one word, so word association, to go with that player. Mario Williams. Aggressive. Ooh, goodness me. I can't wait to see that. Uh, same thing for you, Nick. Let's go. Clayton. Talented. Off oh, real? Mm -hmm. Now I want to elaborate on that because this is a dude that I watch catch passes for TDs. What is it about him that's talented? You just see him with just so much raw, like natural ability, like on the field. He just he doesn't know how to like just. I guess a good word is control it yet because mm. he's just all over the place. But I mean, once the game actually slows down for him, like Lord, like he's just gonna be he's gonna be a real terror in the Big Twelve. So I I think talented is the, for sure the word for him right now. I should have followed up on this, Jeremiah. Forgive me. Why is Mario aggressive? His character, mm. the way he plays. He's not afraid to express himself by any means. I'm talking if he beats a corner on a, on a go route or a post, he's going to let you know. Off the field, he's going to let you know. He walks around with confidence. That's not, that's not what many young guys have, and I, I appreciate him for, for showing that. So you guys been around for Kyler Murray. You've been around for Jalen Hurts. You've been around for Spencer Rattler. Um, I'm not asking you to rank those dudes or tell me what the difference is between them, but what is it like for you to know whoever is at quarterback is one of the best players in the country? Uh, for me personally, it's it's been fun having those guys around. When you talk about Kyler Murray, um, obviously he has something that you can't teach, mm -hmm. that speed. Mm -hmm. When you talk about Jalen Hurts, I don't know if I've ever been around a better leader. Mm -hmm. When you talk about Spencer, he's coming into his own and, and making a name for himself. So it's just been fun being around those guys and knowing that to be that guy at the next level, these are the type of guys and that's the type of work ethic that you have to have to make it. And so uh, it's been fun. Nick, what about you? Um, I would probably say the same. You know, all of them are different in their own way. You know, like, like Kyler, you know, Kyler was just, you know, a guy that just walked on the field and you're like, okay, like, let's see, like, what, what he's about to do, like, this Saturday. Like, because he's always coming with something crazy. And then, you know, with, with Jalen Hurts, um, he just, you know, he commanded the locker room. He was always that guy everyone looked to. And then just like Jeremiah said, you know, Spencer's coming into his own. He's a real great player. You know, I know everybody likes him on the team. And, you know, he's just a guy you know, we all look to. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to go behind seven. So, Nick, as a guy who has seen this defense go through ups 
and tremendous downs and back to ups. What do you feel is the ceiling for your defense? Um, I feel like it's really high. And, you know, I feel like a thing that, that makes this defense so special is that we just have so many guys that are hungry and have something to prove this year. And, you know, I've never really, you know, I've seen it, you know, because we all wanted to get to the top. But from the success that we had last year and to still be hungry and to still want more, like, that's just a sign of a real dangerous defense to me and the guys that just, that just want it. So, you know, I feel like, you know, this defense, you know, sky's the limit for us, but we're just going to take it one step at a time for sure. I do want to follow up on that because the dude that I can't get enough stories about and hearing about is your defense coordinator, Coach Grinch. Do you have a favorite story of Coach Grinch? That's PG? Uh, that's PG, <laughs> yes. That's PG. No, nah, I mean, I don't know. Just any, any time he comes in before practice and he just starts yelling at us, you know, just trying to hype us up, you know, just you know, getting us ready for just a practice at that, not even the game. So those are always usually funny, and, you know, those always uh, get, get the team going. So I'll probably say any moment like that. I'm not going to lie. I play offense, and Grinch <laughs> motivates me. So... <laughs> Yeah, his presence is felt. That, do, do you ever think that somebody needs to get that man a cup of water? <laughs> okay. I'm glad it's not oh, just yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> that man going horse out there getting yeah. him in some water. He goes he got veins popping out the side of his head and all. <laughs> all right. I made what I think are the all-time best offense and defense to play in the Big 12. I want y'all to take a look at it, and if I left somebody off, tell me who you would take off to add them. I, I like it. I, I just I don't mind anybody that's here, but I, I definitely could have seen Stryker on here for sure. Eric Stryker. Yeah. Why would you put Eric Stryker on there? Just because, as far as him being in the Big Twelve, like I feel like he was unblockable. But I mean, I, I can't go wrong with any of these picks either, though. Do you want to switch? Yeah. Man, the stories we tell about Eric Stryker, like. I'm glad you even said that because yeah. there's some people out there that's forgetting. True, nah, he was a beast. The Tennessee fans know all about oh. Eric Stryker. Look, people were torching me on, on Twitter, on Instagram, talking Ooh. about where's Baker, uh, where's Mark Clayton. I'm like, man, I got 11 positions here. I did expect Baker to be on here, but you got you got Vince Young. The man beat 2005 <laughs> USC yeah, for look. national championship. That, that's why he's on. Yeah. I'm saying, right? Like. It was one of the rare years in which, yo, can we give two Heismans if we gonna do this? Cause you know it was Reggie and Vince, and we all agree, you know, it's Reggie's Heisman because he won it. But doggone, man, that and plus, we talk about national championships. Yeah, that's the D C D over D D. I mean, I, I love did. I love C D, but I did think about that. I mean, we we in AT and T Stadium, so yeah. you have to say that uh, with your chest. You're right. You're right. Just say it like if you gonna <laughs> say right. it. My fault. My fault. No, no, look, look. Look, why Didi? Why would you want Didi there? He was up for the Heisman. He was man. in the Heisman race. <sighs> you, you're not wrong. You are not wrong. I got CD there because, I mean, y'all are there for it. Oh, yeah. yeah. 2019 no, Texas. I've seen it. Yeah. Shooting. Yeah, it's true. Oh, man. Too. Yeah, had a bunch of them. <laughs> like five dudes God, around that man. Iowa State, K-State. Good. He was different. Me. Jeremiah Hall, Nick Benito, thank you so much for the time. Thank this you, Tom. So much fun for me. I'm here with Iowa State running back, Brees Hall, defense back, Greg Eisworth. How you guys doing? I'm doing good. Okay. How you doing? All right. All right. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Greg, man, I got to say, dog, it feel like you've been here forever. <laughs> Do you feel like you've been here forever? Well, I feel like I've been in college forever. Iowa State, you know, I've been there the last three or four or something like that year. So... Iowa State, not really, but mm. college, yeah. I feel like I've been in college. So, because I, I got to ask you, man, what is it like to play with Jack Trice? Ah, uh, <laughs> I ain't cool cat, man. I ain't cool dude. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, uh, okay. Like, in six years of playing, this being your sixth year playing college football, right? Mm -hmm. at, at some level, what's your favorite memory so far? Ooh, that's tough. Mm. Favorite memory? Uh, it's hard to pick out just like one memory, mm. you know. Um, but I would like definitely say like just my journey here at Iowa State, like as a whole, has been pretty awesome. Like seeing the program progress these past couple years, uh, just meeting new people, finding my faith really, getting closer to God in my faith. Uh, you know, just a lot of stuff, a lot of things like that that I'll just put into my my entire experience here at Iowa State. Brees, what's your favorite memory so far? Um, I say. Outside of my first semester just getting to college, my favorite memory was probably just this last football season up until 
up until now, you know, um, really just me doing everything I worked for, everything I expected of myself, but nobody else really expected expected me to do all that. So, uh, and me just really shocking the country, surprising everybody, and uh, proving that I belong. And then now, up until now, with like the whole NIL stuff, just being able to make money off the name, image, and likeness, and just that experience, just really going through that has been real cool. So I want to pick that up with the shock the world aspect of last season for both of you. Mm -hmm. But I want to start with this. What made y'all believe halfway through the season, beginning of the season, that this was in your sights? Oh, well, I'll start. I feel like we've always believed, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew we were good enough. Uh, we knew everybody's story on our team was a little bit unique. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we used to call ourselves like the misfit toys, like the guys that nobody really wanted. But we all knew we could play, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so that was kind of like a little fire for us, mm -hmm. you know, that we wanted to prove that we belong here. Uh, so we always believed, we always knew. It was just figuring out how to do it, how to put everything in place. And then, you know, as the season progresses, we realized, and like, yeah, you know, we got a shot at doing this, but then that's where Coach Campbell comes in and like, hey, stay focused, you know, everything, just focus on our standard, our culture, everything that's inside these walls, and you'll be straight. And so that's kind of been our mindset and our, you know, how we've progressed. Reese, what about you? Um, I really, I feel like our team's also always, always believed, you know, we knew we belonged. We knew we could play with anybody in the conference. And, you know, just through last year, you know, just us getting some surprising wins to the world, but not to us. You know, we expected that of ourselves. And then towards the end of the season, just realizing that we had a chance, you know, it just gave us that much more juice. And we just had that confidence and everything was just working out. We were playing our best ball and we believed in each other. We believed in our process, our system, and everything played out for the best. So you had a tweet that got a lot of attention, I think just after winning the Fiesta Bowl. Do you remember the tweet? No. Five-star culture? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe it was just that. Mm -hmm. What were you saying? Five-star culture versus five-star players. You know, we don't, like Greg said, we don't have the guys that everybody wanted. We don't have the five stars. We don't have the high recruits, mm -hmm. the guys who had all the hype and the guys who are about the glitz and glamour. We just got guys that are willing to come in day in and day out and, you know, just go through that process and, you know, just believe in our culture, believe in, you know, what the coach has set for us, what our strength staff has set for us. And, you know, we just come in day in and day out and work, work hard and, we're, we're fine with that. You know, we don't need to be the guys that everybody wants to, you know, see on TV. Like, we don't we don't care about any of that. We just come in and, you know, we're going to fight, fight, and we're going to keep playing, and we're going to fight. Greg, you mentioned Misfit Toys and, you know, you guys feeling like y'all were unwanted in some aspect, but you got a bunch of JUCO dudes on that squad. And the reason I point that out is it takes a different kind of person to play junior college football mm -hmm. and then get into FBS. What do you think you'll learn from playing junior college football? Uh, playing JUCO, man, it is it is kind of tough um, mentally. Like, you know, a lot of the guys feel like they don't belong there or, you know, they should be playing somewhere else. But I think JUCO for a lot of guys is humbling, mm. right? Like, all right, how much do you really love football, <laughs> right? You want to you wanna go play uh, FBS D1 football. All right, you got to play here first when there's no fans. It's, right. You know, I'm used to Texas high school football. We got mm -hmm. playoff games. We got 30,000 fans in the stands, right? Mm -hmm. playing in the AT&T Stadium. And Juco is probably 50, 60, you know, but you playing football, and if you really love football, you can go to work, you know? And so uh, I think it's a humbling experience for some people, and it kind of weeds out the guys that if you really want to do this or not. So I want to stick with this because about five years ago, four years ago, Y'all unveiled this defense that you run in today. Mm -hmm. And it's unlike any other defense that is in the Big 12, let alone the country. And then you've seen it adapted in the pros. I think Bill Belichick runs some variation of the defense that you run. When Coach Haycock put that in front of y'all, what was your first thought? Uh, initially, I'm like, OK, this is pretty unique. You know, I was when I first got to Iowa State, they had me at the middle safety position. Right. Right. So you kind of. You know, they're telling me safety, but you're almost like a linebacker. <laughs> right? you like, you're in the box. Yeah, you like a, a linebacker 10 yards off the ball. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's unique because now you can run support and you're already deep enough for helping pass coverage and stuff. Um, so, you know, now I've been able to kind of mix around in all the safety positions. But, you know, it's very unique. Uh, 
you know, I think it's versatile as well. You can do so much with eight people off the ball. Um, so, but initially, yeah, I was excited. And like, okay, I can make some plays at this, you know, the star position. So, man, I was looking at this, and, and Brees, I would love your thoughts on on playing against this defense and scout team because I'm looking at it, I was like, hey, that ain't gonna work. Like, y'all, y'all drop eight. Like, you, you, people gonna pick this apart. Yeah. And what it came down to was y'all's ability to come down and make plays, wrap people up, put them on the ground. Fundamental football, which you think about, right? Mm-hmm. Which you think everybody can do but not everybody can do it. And you would frustrate the hell out of these quarterbacks that are used to being able to throw nines and sevens, mm-hmm. right? And y'all were able to stay in front of them. Brees, what is it like for you to run against that defense? It's it's different, you know, just going against other defenses who have run regular 4-3 or regular 3-4 defenses, you know, like the way these guys like fit gaps is mm-hmm. completely different. The way the safeties play is completely different. So, you know, like, uh, when I first got to college, it was a real big learning adjustment for me. And even now, you know, I, get, I just really got to focus on, you know, how they're fitting, how the line's flowing, how the linebackers are fitting gaps and just reading their leverage and kind of just making the best play possible. So going against them and then then first you have to learn about how to run the ball against them. But then you got to learn how to pick up the blitzes. And that's, that's where it really got difficult at first. And, you know, because they send blitzes from all around the field. The safety's coming. Three, four linebackers come and play a man. Like, it's just not like any other defense. And, you know, that's what makes it so unique. And that's why I like to go against it because it just maximizes. It helps me because I get to, you know, just get to go against something different that I haven't seen. So when I do go against teams that try to run the 3 3 5, I know it's, I already know it's coming. No, nah, man, like I mentioned when I thought it wasn't going to work when I first saw it. And then I'm looking at guys running free to the quarterback. And it's, that's, that's not uncommon. What is is the offensive lineman going, yo, that's your assignment. Mm-hmm. And it's going, no, nah, that's, that's your assignment because they don't know what they're looking at or how they're seeing this, this defense and the way that I think a lot of people were having a hard time with the air raid 20 years ago. So it's interesting for me to hear your thoughts about playing against it and playing in it. Brees, who's the best running back ever from Wichita? Barry Sanders. Okay, all right, I had to ask. <laughs> I, had to, I had to ask, I had to ask. Yeah, some, yeah. some dudes would have gave that to themselves. Yeah. Just saying. All right. Yeah, that was a trap. What? Well, hey, no. <laughs> like, if you think you that good, you think you, you that say good. It, yeah. Okay. Like, I think I'm that good. Right. I mean, I don't play football. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm doing. Yeah, I think I'm that good. You good at what you do? Okay. All right. So that was a setup <laughs> for this. All right. This is what I think the best all-time Big 12 team would look like on offense and defense. Brees, you looking at offense. Greg, you're looking at defense. If I am missing someone, let me know who, but also... Tell me who you're taking off. No. <laughs> because I don't know Derek Strait and Justin Gilbert. They got to be removed from the list. I'm assuming they're DBs, right? They are DBs. One, yeah. one, one of them won the Thorpe Award. Oh. Best defense back. Which one? Strait. All right, he can stay. He's straight. He's straight. He's straight. <laughs> he, he said he He's can straight. stay. Derek Strait is straight. Okay. Justin Gilbert, don't know him. I got to be up there. Okay. So me and Earl Thomas, I think that would be a good combo. You and Earl Thomas? Okay. Yeah, me and Earl Thomas in the back end, I think that's a good combo. Which one of y'all playing corner? Wait, there's only, oh, there's only three DBs. Hmm. I'll go play some corner. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll go play some corner. You think that much of Earl Thomas at free safety? Yeah, he nice at free safety. I just, you know, he, you know, he got the range, he got the instincts, all that stuff. So I'll go play some corner. I get a little corner blitz. What are you, 6'3 corner? Me? Yeah. No, I'm, five, uh, I'm six foot. Oh, what you uh, talking about? I was, try- I was trying to give you an extra three inches. I mean. I'm five five. I'm remember. always trying to give somebody yeah, some height. It's cool. It's cool. I'm six one. Okay. Six two. All right. It's a big corner. Yeah, appreciate it. big corner. It. Appreciate it. Y'all can switch, too, so you can take a yeah. look and see. The defense. On, uh, offense. I know all these. Everybody knows all the offense, but then when we talk about the offensive line, you know. Julian Good Jones. <laughs> no. Uh, the line solid. Solid. I forgot about Justin Black. Yeah, he, was right tough. Tough. he was tough. Yeah, this this tough list. Yeah. I appreciate tough that. Tough list to crack. C D solid though. Easy. A P easy. A A D A A D. A D. A D. A D. A D A P. A D. All day. All yeah, day. there you go. You. There, there you got it. You got it. You got it. Well, Brees Hall, Greg Eisworth, thank you so much for Really, what I thought was fun for mm-hmm. me was it fun for y'all. Yes, yes sir. for sure. Very cool. I wish y'all the best of luck. Hope to see y'all in the Big 12 championship once again, chasing major bowl win again. Uh, I'll see y'all soon. Yes, sir. Appreciate, Appreciate you. it.
I'm here with Iowa State head coach, Matt Campbell. Matt, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Very cool. I'm glad that you're here. So we're going to have a little fun, and I want to start with this, though. Uh, could you point to one thought, one slogan that propelled Iowa State to its first ever major bowl victory, Fiesta Bowl, beating a Pac-12 champion in Oregon? Like, what were you telling your team all season? Yeah, you know, I, I think the, you know, for us, the reality to that question was, you know, was really putting fear in the back seat, putting courage in the front seat, mm. and having the opportunity to grow daily. And, you know, I think that group defined that, to be honest with you, a mm. year ago. And, um, you know, I think sometimes as our program has risen, um, you know, you, you, you cared so much, coaches and players, that sometimes you're there was a fear of failure and you know i think a little bit of that needed to be put in the back seat and put the courage of man we get to do this we don't have to do this and um you know in a, in a really powerful time a year ago going through a unique circumstance but i think it allowed us to really grow so i look at your team i see 19 starters back an all-american running back an all-american tight end a quarterback with 25 school records Going to go over 10,000 yards passing this year, Lord willing. What are your upperclassmen being told? Like, what do you tell them they still have to prove? Well, you know, I, I think for them, the only proof that we ever want is just that did we or did we not become the best version of ourselves that we can be? Um, you know, I, we're not really trying to prove anything to the outside world. Um, I think what we're trying to do is prove that, man, we can develop a process. We can put our ego aside and we can look deep and say, man, where can I grow? Where do I need to grow? Because we know if we quit growing, then failure is right around the corner. And so, you know, I think from from our group, it's been really fun to watch the leadership that has kind of surrounded this year's football team. You know, I think that's what's fun about college football. Every year is different. Um, and you're right, there's guys that have had success, but they've been willing to put their ego aside. They've been willing to dig deep and whether it's mentally, whether it's been physically or whether it's been in their craft, they've been willing to challenge themselves to grow. And when your best players do that and the young players in your program see that, then I think your whole organization has a chance to grow. And, and that's not just them, that's sometimes equal to us as the coaches, right? Um, and so I think that's been a great challenge for this group, but one that has been really fun to watch uh, a lot of growth occur within our walls. I look at a kid like Brees Hall and I see the fruition of years and years of his development, but not, not just his, but Iowa State's first unanimous All-American in the history of, of that school. And that's such a big deal, such a heady thing. I understand coaches are not into individual accomplishments, but what is it for you that sticks out about that kid in particular? Well, you know, what I love about Brees is, you know, Brees had a lot of options to go to a lot of places. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times we talk about, man, if you want to come to our place, you know, come because you think it can be a transformational experience, not a transactional experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're not that school where, man, it's transactional USA. This is a place where we're going to challenge you and we're going to ask you to be the, become the best version of you you can be, not just on the field, but off the field. And I think when I look at Brees, the God-given ability that he's been blessed with, the ability to never take a day for granted and come to work every day to become the best he can be. The ability to grow as a leader within our program and the ability to, to really put his ego at the door and you know be be a great team player. I, it, it's been really fun to watch. And um, you know, Brees has got an incredible mother, great stepfather, um, a great family around him that I think has instilled all the values of what what greatness looks like to be a young man and to, to someday go out in, the, in society and be a great man. And it's been probably that's probably been the greatest reward is to watch how he's handled um, some of the great things that have come his way and the ability to understand that we still play a team sport. And a lot of his successes have come because of some of the great teammates he's had around him as well. And so I'm um, just really proud of who he is way greater than what he's done for us. I look on the defense, and I, I always wonder if I'm the only person. It's one of those, am I stupid or is everybody else dumb? Because I look at Will McDonald, and I see the only Power 5 guy returning who had double-digit sacks. Yeah. And I look at a guy like Mike Rose, and I see, quite honestly, the best returning linebacker in the country. What are you telling those guys on defense about pushing and getting better? Yeah, you know, I, I think, you, you know, you just talk about those two guys, and I instantly think of, man, those guys in January, February, March this year. Mm -hmm. And 
man, Mike Rose, his body fat and what he's done to his body to transform himself to who he was as a junior to who he is as a senior right now has been maybe is as impressive as anybody. I look at Will McDonald and I see a young man who, man, has dealt with tough and trying times and yet has persevered and now goes into his junior year and he's got confidence mm -hmm. and he's gone from a 215-pound pound young man to a 248-pound man, you know. And and you, you, you see, you know, I, I think for me I see – those names is not of what they're doing again on the football field, but I see of what they've done to prepare to do what opportunities and moments may come their way on the football field. And I, I think that's what's been really fun about those two and really the entirety of the – there's a lot of returners on that defensive side that we think are, are tremendous football players. And, again, there's been great growth with those young men, not just in terms of their football ability, but also all the other areas of their lives. Coach, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. I'm going to have some fun. Uh, so. These are meant to be rapid fire questions, so first thing that comes to your mind. All right. Um, what was the last job you had before coaching? I worked in a cement factory. Really? <laughs> I did it. What did, did you do? Well, my job was it was it was cement culverts. Uh -huh. There was like a attachment that the crane would take those cement culverts into the into the ditch, and my job was to knock the knock the styrofoam uh, pieces out so the cement or so those metal those metal attachments would be available for the crane to move them off the conveyor belt. So that was my job. That's not a metaphor for life, man. <laughs> Last one of these. Which fictional football player would you most want to join your team? Mm. Oh, man, that's a great question. You know, I, I, so I've got a son named Rudy, so I'm going to have to, hey, I'm, I'm gonna have to go. go with, I'm going to have to go with Rudy. You know, we, we like attitude and effort in, in our program, so I'd go with Rudy. One thing here, Coach. Let me, let me find this. So I put together an all-time – Big 12 offense and defense. Okay. Please take a look at these yeah. and tell me who I missed. And if I miss someone, you got to tell me who you're taking off. Hmm. Well, I, you know, this, this is a pretty good list right here. On the, I'm looking at the offensive mm -hmm. piece of it first. So, you know, we hope that we can have some names here down the road that maybe we can we can we can get taken off there. But I don't know if I can I can argue right now with any of those guys on offense. Now let me look at this defense here. You know, well, the the first the first thing I would say is is maybe this this Mike Rose has a chance to take this hey. this Sean Weatherspoon spot. You know, Missouri they're not even in the conference anymore. So we you know we got to get a cyclone on there. So, um, but that that would be my only adjustment. But you're talking again. Man, some, some tremendous football players, and, and I think he did a great job. Well, Coach Eisen certainly hope that Mike Rose can make that. I think he has an opportunity. I want to give him another year to play football. Yeah, it's That's fair. all. Totally okay. fair. Um, Iowa State head coach Matt Campbell, thank you so much. All right. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yes, it. I'm here with K-State head coach Chris Kleiman. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing great today. Uh, I want to start with this. Not a whole lot of coaches get to say, A, I have a national championship ring as a head coach. And B, I'm undefeated against Oklahoma, two and zero. How do you build on this energy that surrounds you and what you've been bringing to this program in the last few years? Uh, it's a great question. Um, a, I'm blessed to have a, a national championship and, and uh, uh, successful enough that we had seven of eight in, in, in that time at, at North Dakota State. But uh, um, trying to bring. Uh, an already great culture that Bill Snyder had elevated is what we're trying to do. And that's, uh, that's not easy. We're improving. Uh, I like where we're at as a football team. I liked where our trajectory started in 2019 and then we all got derailed in 2020. Um, but we kind of redefined some things, re-energized, reconfigured some stuff. And I like where we're at as we head into 2021. You have a guy about my size, about 171 pounds, about 1,000 yards, catching the ball, running yep. the ball, dynamo, uh, Deuce Vaughn. What is the ceiling for this kid? Uh, it's unlimited. The kid's a special, special player, and he's a better person. Uh, he's a, a kid that's very humble, uh, somebody that always believes there's more, always believes in what's next, what can I do more, what can I improve on more. He's never felt like, no, I've already arrived at this level, and that's a credit to his family, to his parents, uh, and how they raised him. Um, he's one of our probably five or ten best leaders on the football mm -hmm. team as a, as a true sophomore, uh, not only because of what he does on the field, but probably more importantly how he conducts himself off the field. Last year did Coach Messingham have to 
limit his touches to try to hey we still have a young kid here that's still learning what we do as opposed to let's see what he can do I think early on we for sure did okay. because we were trying to uh, learn about him you know we were trying to f figure him out and, and him trying to figure our offense out and then as the season progressed and it you know just didn't seem like it was a long season even though we got we were one of the few that got 10 games in mm -hmm. um, you know we had to try to find ways to get him the ball more and more um, but we had we have to find some ways to take some pressure off him this year uh, by opening up some things in the passing game outside so that people can't you know gang up to, to defend him whether it's via the run or uh, out of the backfield catching the football so uh, I, I'm looking forward to other people stepping up and, and Coach Mess designing some things so that uh, it does give Deuce some more freedom. One of the things that I continue to marvel at is just how good you guys have been at scheming against other teams. There's one play that a friend of mine shows me over and over again. It's like a fake lead power that you used to great effect against Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys come up with this stuff, man? A lot of time, probably too much time in the office, okay. you know, and uh, just always trying to um, – I, I like to help the offense because I'm a defensive-minded guy okay. of where are their eyes at? What are, what are they keen? Are they keen the guards? Are they keen the fullbacks? And, and if you get a team that's only keen the guards, maybe you can um, maybe throw a wrinkle in there once in a while to try to throw off their keys. And, and that's, but that's going on across the landscape of football now is just people are having so much time and designing so many things. You know, I think Lincoln does as good a job as, any, as anybody of designing new plays. You're like, where did that come from? <laughs> uh, but it's the innovation that uh, is part of our game right now. One of the other things that I really enjoy about you guys is that you are always, it seems to me, greater than the sum of your parts. When you see it on the football field, the way that the team works together, how do you instill that in drills and day-to-day -day practices? Well, we, we probably took a step back in my mind in that, in that uh, respect last year in 2020, and we tried to get back into that this spring and this summer uh, of, of just detailing uh, everything that we do, detailing every drill, detailing every part of practice, detailing every scheme of a run play or a scheme of a coverage, uh, and then just repetition, 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 and, and we're we're different. We're a huddle offense. We're not a no-huddle offense that goes as fast as you can, so you better be precise mm -hmm. at the plays you do run, and you better rep them over and over and over again. And we've probably simplified, um, I think, in the spring and what we look to do in the fall so that we're not, you know, more is better, mm -hmm. but um, being more efficient with what we do do. We're in an unprecedented time in college football for a number of reasons, not the least of which is coming out of COVID. but. The labor pool, use economic terms here, has never been larger. Well, I should say it has been the largest it's been since the 90s when we went to scholarship limits. But also in there, there's never been more skill. And by that, I mean experience, right? Guys that have played a lot of college football. How are you better taking advantage of that in this really once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? Yeah, and we had five guys get to be super seniors, and um, that's kind of the term that we use at least is we've got five super seniors, and uh, one of them is our quarterback, and you better utilize that if you've got the quarterback of your football team that is really the pulse of your team, uh, that's really the, the vocal leader, the, the silent leader uh, that uh, makes everybody around him better. Um, I, I think the product of college football this year is going to be much better. Uh, last year, whether it was opt-outs to injuries to COVID of not knowing who was going to be around, um, the product I didn't think was, was great week in and week out. Now you take the fact of all those young kids that had to play last year that maybe weren't ready to play are a year better, a year more experienced, plus all the guys that returned uh, and not maybe having kids out for COVID. I think the product's going to be better. I, I, I've listened, um, just as you have today, of how many uh, in the five teams that are here, how many people are back, how many mm -hmm. returners are back. I think that's great for college football because um, so many people missed out on, on what I think is the greatest sport there is in college football and the pageantry of it. Well, to that end, uh, one of the things you guys reminded me of in walking into this locker room is you get to open your season here at AT&T Stadium against Stanford. I mean, what kind of an opportunity is that for you? Does it, does it ever weigh on you? No, I'm excited okay. about it. Our players are excited about it. That was... I came down here two years ago for my first media day and just kind of walked around and people took me to spot spot didn't know where I was at this time it's a little bit different feeling okay where's our locker room which sideline would be on where are the play clocks at um, just kind of checking out the uh, the, the entire uh, ambiance of the of the facility and it's big mm -hmm. and 
Um, but I'm excited to, to bring um, Kansas State football down here where we have so many alums. Um, Dallas-Fort Worth area, the state of Texas, we have tons of, tens of alums. We have a lot of kids that play on our team. Uh, so it'll be good. We have the extra home game because we're on the five side uh, in our league with the five home games. So uh, we had the opportunity to, to bring it down here. And I, I know our kids are excited. You get a chance to play in AT&T Stadium. How awesome is that? Yeah, man. No, I'm, I'm excited to see you guys play that game. I'm really looking forward to it from an X and O standpoint, but also two head coaches I greatly respect. Mm. Uh, Coach, want to pivot okay. to these questions that we've been asking players and coaches, compilations, uh, and they're a lot of fun. Uh, so the first one is, say three nice things about your rival. About a rival? Mm -hmm. um, Lance Leipold's a phenomenal guy. Uh, Scott Fuchs is his is, is offensive line coach. I coach with him for uh, five years. And uh, um, you, uh, my third thing will be Lance Leipold because I think they had a home run with the hire. Uh, best uniforms in college football, can't say your own team. Oh, best uniform in college football, can't say our own team. Um, let's see. I, I, I've always been a fan of, of Michigan's uniforms. Okay. All right. Yep. I'll take that. Um, which fictional football player would you most want to join your team? Oh, um, help me out with his name. Okay. He, in the water boy. Boucher. Bobby but, yeah, Boucher. Bobby Boucher. What do you, what do you, why? Energy. Okay. Energy. Man, we're talking about bringing, bringing the life to the defense. Let's bring Bobby Boucher in. Let's bring him to have some, bring some energy and life to the defense. See, when the kids tell me that, they're all like, no, he'll, he'll kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it's yeah. all about what he does on a football field. Yeah, I'm no, like, I'm liking his energy. Coach, I want to pivot to our last bit of fun here. Okay. So I put together what I thought was the best all-time offense and defense to ever play the Big 12. Okay. I would enjoy you taking a look at these as defense okay. and tell me what you think, who you might add, who you might take off. Um, okay, on offense, mm. the one that I would add would be Darren Sproles. Okay. All right. Are, okay. we, are we removing a wide receiver? Are we moving a tailback? Tight end? I remove any of them you want. I'll take Darren <laughs> okay. Sproles. He's like, okay. Well, Darren I'm, not gonna, the I'm not going to disrespect one of these guys because they're all good, but I, I, I give me Darren Sproles on there. Okay. Okay. And just because he's on our staff, give me Colin Klein, too, to be the quarterback. Right on. <laughs> on defense. Hmm. Oh, there's some good ones on that defense. <laughs> I think you did a pretty dang good job on, on defense there. I think uh, the Lockets might have something to say to me. Yeah, well, the lo yeah. <laughs> any of the Lockets could be on there for sure. You could put all, all of them on there. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give a shout-out to Mark Seminole and Ben mm. Lieber. Put those guys on there too, the linebackers. Uh, and the one that I thought I was going to hear that I was happy not to, but I, I will give him his, uh, his due anyway, give him his flowers. Michael Bishop was my favorite quarterback. Michael Co Bishop Man, was, like, come on. He was dynamite. Yeah, Probably just didn't do it as long because he was only there for two years. Exactly. And that was, I mean, it's hard because yep. you're taking into account what guys did for individual seasons, what yep. they did over the course of the year. I can't argue with anybody you have on there, though. You get a, you get a great you're one. You're being gracious, and I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, K-State head coach Chris Kleiman, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. I'm here with K-State quarterback Skylar Thompson and defense back Jerome McPherson. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good, sir. Right on, right on. Uh, Skylar, I want to talk, start with you. Uh, you're entering your sixth year of college football at K-State. What's it like for you to be on your third U.S. president? <laughs> Yeah, just put some perspective how uh, how long I've been here, but no, it feels good. I mean, it's cool. Right on, man. Uh, like, the reason I ask it in that way is we're in an unprecedented time in college football where you guys have an opportunity to play another year. You get to live so many other people's dreams. Uh, how do you feel about being able to do this and basically get this last hurrah in? Yeah, well, it, it's it's a like you said, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity mm -hmm. and. Uh, these years you only get, you know, they only come around, you know, every now and then and, and not very, not everybody gets to experience them. There's so many people that would dream to be in our shoes, you know, and uh, for us to to get this year, uh, this year back from, from COVID, get another another opportunity is is special. And, you know, I know me and me and Jerron plan on taking, taking, you know, full advantage of it. Jerron, for you, I was asking because I wanted to get this number right. 
Nine siblings. Yeah, nine. Who wins in a fair fight? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it you? Oldest. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, I, I'm the oldest, yeah. And yeah. So I'm the what, oldest. What I say too. go? Oh, you too. Okay. I'm the oldest too. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not giving that one out. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm the only one that gets that. Yeah, one. You know it. That one. All right. In your D B room, mm -hmm. right? Knowing that you have this many siblings, what's it like for you to be one of the leaders in that room? Uh it's it feels normal because mm -hmm. I'm the oldest in uh my my actual siblings and then I'm the oldest in the DB room so it's like all, all these little brothers running around you know some some of them crazy you know uh, just trying to keep everybody you know intact and you know close close knitted because you know we're gonna go through some stuff during the year and we're gonna have to you know trust each other and be there for each other. What are you guys trying to accomplish in 2021, Skylar? You first, then Jerron. What you like to answer? You know, I just think that. You know, this is going to be be the best best one yet, mm -hmm. best season yet. Um, you know, it's our it's our last shot at this. It's our last ride. And uh, you know, when you got something on the line that you're never never going to get back, and you know it, uh, you're just naturally going to give more and want it more. And I think for us, it's just um, taking it day by day, trusting the process, um, playing as one. You know, not not putting you know an individual. Um, you know, or Focusing on you or me, you know, it's about us. You know, that that's that's how we're approaching this year, and uh, we're super excited to to continue just to to grow uh, each and every day um, as a as a team and as a unit, and uh, be ready whenever September fourth comes. You're wrong about you. I think as a whole, um, our one goal is a Big Twelve championship, mm -hmm. and I feel like everybody in the locker room uh, right now will, will wants to die about it. You know, uh, I know I took it to the extreme, but you know, we really want that. As, as one unit, you know, as one common goal. And, you know, I feel like uh, we have a chance this year to, to be something special. Well, and to that end for both of you, I mean, since Coach Kleiman has joined up, y'all are 2-0 and against the conference champs, right? Uh, what is it like for you guys to know you can get that W and then want to carry that momentum all the way through the rest of the year? Yeah, well, it just gives us confidence, you know. Um, I think whenever, like you said, the, the, we beat the team last few years, that's won our conference. Um, so I think that uh, the biggest thing for us is just is treating every game like it's like we're playing Oklahoma, you know, and, and being consistent in our preparation and the way that we, we show up. You know, we can't, we can't play a season on a roller coaster. You know, that, that's not um, going to get us where we want to get to. So uh, just focusing on getting one day better, 1% uh, better, Every single day, you know, and just over a long period of time, you're just going to be, just be rising, you know, and that that's our goal as a team. Jerron, about you? Um, like Skyler said, bouncing off him, um, the main thing uh, that we should take from that is being more consistent. Like he said, mm -hmm. um, you know, why not play every every game like we're playing Oklahoma, and then we'll get the results that we want, you know, as as a team. I gotta ask because you lined up, you faded up. Who the barber in Manhattan? Actually, it's my boy in Kansas City. Oh, for real? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you got you got to leave to to get this kind of fade edge. Yeah, it's my boy. You gotta somebody cut your hair that you trust. You gotta stick with him. I'm with that. I'm his name's his name's Casey. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up, Jerron. You get your hair done. You know we two KC boys, so you know we going to the we we going to the home. I got to yeah. ask, yeah. man. Yeah, I got to, to home, ask. Man. Okay, look, look, because I need to get touched up before yeah. I came out here too, yeah. right? But like, I can find somebody in Tulsa. And I've been to Manhattan, and I'm going, man, are y'all cutting each other hair? Because y'all all look fresh. You know what I mean? Like, I look around, I'm going, wait, wait, wait a second. They don't have no helmet? barbers in Tulsa? What's up? They got barbers in Tulsa? Oh, see, see, yes, yes. My, my mom from there, we, that's my man. We got, we got champion barbers in okay, Tulsa. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Where, oh, you say your mom from there. Where about? She went to Booker T High School. Hey! Oh, my God. We got horns in the house. Yeah. Nah, I like that. Yeah, I like crazy. that. That's what's up. Nah, but you guys look fresh. You look appreciate real clean. It, appreciate, it. appreciate that, man. I look at this dude who about my height, about 20 pounds larger, that can nobody tackle. What's it like for you guys to have Deuce Vaughn on your side of the, fe uh, the field and for you to be chasing him around? Well, for me, <laughs> it makes my life a lot easier. You know, whenever you can throw the ball to somebody at, for five yards and you can take it 60, you know, it just um, it takes some pressure off my back, mm -hmm. you know, um, and not trying to – force big plays or whatever, you know, just uh, trusting the offense, trusting 
you know, what he's doing and, and letting our offense work, you know, and he's a he's a great asset in our team, you know, running the ball, you know, catching the ball, he can do it all. Um, and on top of that, he's just a great leader. He's a great person. Uh, you would never anticipate that he he was a freshman. You never expect the way, by the way, he carries himself or acts. Um, so he, he's a tremendous asset to our team and he makes us all better. Ron, what's life? For me, it's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Deuce, uh, you know, having a, you know, uh, wrap him up in mm-hmm. practice is the one of the hardest things to do when you can't take him to the ground. So uh, he makes me tremendously better and he makes our defense better. You know, uh, we see a lot of good backs, but, you know, him being that low to the ground and being able to, you know, keep his balance, you know, and also get away from you. Mm-hmm. He can run. You know, he just he's very versatile. And like, like Sky said, he's a great person. Is he strong? Yes. Yeah, he's strong, too. Very strong. Yeah. Like, y'all got stories? I mean, like, you know, he's going to be way bigger than he was last year. <laughs> <laughs> Not taller, but, you know, he looks bigger. No, because uh, one of the things that impresses me most about watching him is, yes, he's fast. Yes, he's agile. Yes, he'll get away from you. But when you talk about tackling, right, mm-hmm. I've seen him shuck off more than one. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Like, when you watch film, anybody getting called out? Like, you ain't got to give no names. But I'm just yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, if, if you watch, too, he's taking some licks and got up, right up, you know. He's taking some big hits and just, you know, that, that shows his heart and, you know, how, how strong he really is. I put together what I think are – the best all-time offense and defense in Big 12 history. Mm-hmm. Please take a look at it. Let me know who I missed. And if you think I missed someone, who you taking off? Oh, this is all-time offense. Yeah. Like, yes, Tavon yeah. Austin should definitely. No, was West Virginia with the Big 12 then? Yes, who you taking out? Who you taking off? Uh, I'll take off a lot of guys over him. <laughs> Uh, Be specific. Uh, I'll probably yeah, okay. sure. All right. take off. I mean, I don't, I don't know the lineman like that. Yo, man, I gotta have five offensive line, man. man. Yeah, got to. I think this. So I think I'd this, have to take off receiver. The defense, your defensive set right here is way more. Tavon Austin had one of the best highlights I've ever seen in my oh, life. Oh no, I was there for it. It was OU West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. He, nah, I remember. He he he. he Three hundred mm. yards on the ground. Man, I'm like they took a wide receiver, and put him seven yards deep because yeah. then, like, that, that's what you could do against Oklahoma. Yeah, like I, I hear like you. Crazy. I just need to know who you're taking off. And it has to be a receiver. It has to be a receiver. <laughs> Ooh, CD went crazy. I too. mean, you can argue with the running backs that you, which you want to. No, I like the running backs. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take <sighs> Justin Blackman out. Skylar Thompson, Jerome McPherson. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for doing this. I hope it was fun, guys. Appreciate yeah, thank it. you. Appreciate it. I'm here with TCU quarterback Max Duggan and defensive lineman O'Shawn Mathis. How you guys doing? Good. Good. How are you? Good. I'm good, man. I'm good. All right. So I was just commenting on Max's shoe game, which is outstanding, and I was commenting on O'Shawn's hair. All right, y'all usually got fashion like this? Oh, not so often. I just mm. come business, uh, just casual, just. Anything I can find in the morning. You just came out of bed like this, huh? Yeah, I just looked this good. Max, what was the choice for? You know, trying to look a little nice today. You know, every day going to workouts, you're looking a little rough. You know, you don't, you don't have to dress up too much going to workouts, so got to get out a little bit, dress up. Nah, man, I hear that. And last time I saw you guys, and it, you would never have remembered this, but it was in high school football. Max, you particularly at the opening. And I got to say, whatever workout y'all been on, whatever y'all been fed, I like, got so much bigger. Like, do you feel that way? Yes, sir. Coach yes. Summers right there, strength coach, getting you right. Yeah, goodness, for man. sure. Getting you right. <laughs> My goodness. All right, so to your teammates a little bit. Uh, Max, this is for you. A look at Tay Barber, a look at QJ, a look at Marcel Brooks, a look at Zach Evans. How do you feel about your offense? Yeah, we got a lot of kids coming back. Obviously, you got a lot of talent. Um, we got a stable of running backs that, uh, that's coming with us, O-line. Um, done a tremendous job this spring. So really, yeah, we got a lot of talent on offense, but you know, that means, you know, very little right now. I mean, that's what everybody's doing is just all talk. But when you get to the season, uh, you just got to put it together. We understand that you're playing in a league with a lot of talented teams, a lot of good units. Um, we just got to figure out a way to put it put it together and, uh, you know, have a high explosive offense going this year. I hear you. O'Shawn, when we think about TCU, no disrespect, we think about the defense, okay? Right. Right. You got to replace some dudes in the secondary, but you also got some real studs in that front six for y'all running the four two five. Who are you most excited about on that front six? Um, it's a it's a, it's a handful of guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, two guys that stand out. Of course, they play um, right now. They play defensive end. Uh, 
us Kyrie Coleman okay. and uh, um, Dylan Horton. Yeah. Um, Dylan Horton, he's he's been working his butt off uh, just as much as me and Kyrie have, and um, he's he's gonna come out for sure and ball out. And Kyrie, he's doing his thing. Um, growing up, is um, has been tremendous for him, and uh, he's learned many plays uh, with just quick apprehension. So he's like he's really good with just taking the information and being able to perform. So uh, I'm gonna frame this up. And I want to hear y'all's response to it. Do you ever ask Coach Patterson to take a step back because it's game on? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Max. No, you got to be careful. You got to be, be careful. Yeah, we're going to, you got to be easy around it. Got to be easy around him. <laughs> oh, uh, that's in reference, obviously, to, to Coach and his musical career. Um, and he, he dropped a single last summer. I think it was Take a Step Back. Uh, how did you guys, like, learn that Coach was into making country music? Um, well, I'll say it was during quarantine. So, okay. he, we, um, you know, you had a lot of time on your hands, not a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, he was done writing scripts, done going over film. And, you know, he broke it out on Twitter that, you know, he was releasing a single. And, you know, right when that happened, all, all those songs got put on our, our practice playlist. So, yeah, we listened <laughs> to them. So... You got you got you got pretty good at them. You know we know all the lyrics, so we 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 we're used to them now. Yeah. Oh, Sean, similar story. Similar story. Uh, came in during COVID. Um, he just happened to stop me by when I was going to uh, academics, and he was like, "Oh, yeah, you should hear my song." <laughs> he was like, "He just showed me," and I was like, "Oh, it was really good, actually." So, and then next next thing you know, he posted it on Twitter like thirty minutes later. I love that Coach is walking around with the SoundCloud link. Yes. Like, yes. like I love it. Got his mixtapes going on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? It's very Dallas. It's very Dallas Fort Worth. Uh, all right. So I want to get into going into this season, right? And I'm going to ask a couple of questions that are looking forward to some games. You guys have had, uh, well, a really intensely good record against this other team from Texas called Texas. Is there something about playing that school that you get up for, or are you just game plan it? Um, well, I'll say, you know, we've been fortunate, fortunate enough to play well against them the last two years. And obviously when you go play in Austin, or, you know, they get to come to our place. It's going to be a big game. Um, always a good team, always a good program, you know, the history in it. Um, but it's really just, you know, just showing up, you know, being able to play your game, you know, not making it, you know, bigger than it. It has to be, but just focusing on yourself, controlling when you need to. But, yeah, we've just been fortunate enough to, to play well against them. Um, you know, we're going to try to keep it going against a good team like them. Well, Sean, what about you? Um, basically just, you know, um, just knowing that they're um, a high-caliber team, just known, well-known across the country, just it, just bringing the intensity is just what, what gets us to go out there and ball out. Right on, right on. So before I let you guys go, I took the liberty – uh, putting together what I thought was the all-time best offense and defense ever in the Big 12. Defense, offense. I would love for y'all to take a look at that. Tell me who I missed, who I got wrong, who you would replace. Okay, I see. I'm glad Kenneth Murray is on here because I played <laughs> against him and he was not fun to play against. <laughs> Sue on. Vince is on here. Adrian Peter, C.D. Lamb. Okay. I'm trying to think about what was this. Is this – Okay, so this is all time. Okay, so this is you know you don't have to be in the Big Twelve now, obviously, because obviously, 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 obviously. Okay. okay. Um. Hmm. I mean, it's looking pretty good. What about uh? Yeah, I don't see. Uh, I don't have any doubts of this. This is really spot on. To be Coach Patterson tried to sneak LT by me. I'm like, he ain't playing. He ain't playing Big Twelve. Uh, yeah, man. Where's LT, man? Nah, he, he, he ain't playing Big Twelve. He ain't playing Big Twelve. Oh, for real? He ain't playing Big Twelve. Yeah, I forget. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I forget they were in Mountain West. Oh, I like this. This is really good, actually. I like this. Um, well, switch. Maybe you find something to contend with. Derek Johnson, Sean Witherspoon, Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray All right. is a good player. Uh, Von Miller. People Darryl forget, Thomas, man. Daryl Thomas. I oh. forgot he went to Texas. <laughs> Yeah, these are spot Blackman on. was such a stud. Oh, my goodness. Hey, man, it's that same era of Johnny Football. Yeah. yeah. He was sure. so good. Yeah, I think these are spot on. All right. For sure. Yeah, Meryl Thomas being who's at the, the top. Who's the old running back? Who's the old running back from Texas? Got drafted to the Saints. 
Ricky Williams? Yeah. Yeah, Ricky Williams. I mean, I, no, hey, Rick. look. Look, a lot of people want to argue about it. But I got to say, you you, take it off. Do you, you ever get hate on, on the quarterback? You ever get stuff like oh, people yeah. want Baker or oh, Kyler yeah. or something? Oh, yeah. all, all the time. All the time. I feel, like <laughs> I feel like it's probably like younger generation that didn't watch Vince Young. Look. Like guys that watched that didn't watch Texas when they're at. See, Max, this is why we get along here, right? <laughs> you got a sense of history, a sense of longevity. Yeah. I got dudes that's like, yo, I'm, I'm going to take him off because I never heard of this dude. <laughs> like yo, that was that was literally ten years ago. What do you mean you never yeah. heard of that? You were around for that. That's what I'm they going off the last thing that's in their head. Well, yeah. you know, right? And I'm looking. I'm oh, man, no, because uh, Ricky Williams certainly, certainly you got to think about that. Uh, for sure, for sure. Because like, man, yeah. Ray, Ray Ola was so mean, dude. <laughs> I mean, I grew up 45 minutes away okay. from Lincoln. Okay, okay, so there you go, there you go. I remember him, he was, I loved him. <laughs> like, I wasn't able to watch him play, but I, I remember, like, my dad and everybody telling me about him. So, I like it. See, here's, I, I get to tell my colleagues, there is a TCU player that remembers when that team was once really, really good. And now, you know, you guys are in a position to create your own legacies. I want to ask you about what you're leaving before I let you go. And by that, I mean you have some true freshmen that I'm very high on, one of which is Shadrach Banks. What do you think about where you are leaving TCU versus where you begin? Um, really, when you think about that question, like obviously the, what everybody says, you want to leave it in a better spot. But what you want to do is when you leave, like you want kids, recruits, to want to go play there. And that's how I was when I was coming out of high school. Like I remember the 2014 team. TCU, you remember mm-hmm. the, you know, Andy Dahl and Rose Bowl, you know. You remember those teams and what they did, and you're like, dang, like, I want to go play at TCU. Like, I remember all this. Um, like, it creates that imagery in your head, and I think that's what, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to create that mindset of, you know, TCU's playing well. Like, they're playing in the Big 12. They're competing in the Big 12 for Big 12 championships. Um, they got a fun offense. They're moving the ball. Defense, I mean, it's gritty. It's tough. It's physical. I think that's what I want to, I want to leave it with that, with TCU, of, of, of being those guys in, in the state of Texas and being those guys in the Big 12 uh, that people want to go to, people want to be a part of. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah and that, that along with just, you know, just le- being able to leave and just having a legacy just sitting here for you, just be able to come back and people will remember who you are. And then, you know, just helping support the team as well, just having recruits come in and stuff like that, and just knowing that you went there and they were like, oh, you know, I would like to go there too. This guy went there, he was successful and stuff like that. So it's, it's great to see. Right on. Max Duggan, O'Shawn Mathis, thank you so much. Sir, it's been a yes, lot sir. of fun. Yes, RJ, appreciate it. Thank you, thank yes, you. sir. So I'm here with Texas Christian head coach, Gary Patterson. Coach, how you doing? Oh, we're awesome. Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, everybody just after going through last year, I think everybody's excited about how the season is, what's going on. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, I think we're all kind of wanting to get the next, next couple weeks through and so everybody can get to camp. So. I sit on the selection committee for the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award, so I got to see you and Trayvon accept the award on behalf of TCU. What is it about producing defensive backs that you seem to get a kick out of? Because when I look at the league, I see your guys all over it. Well, I, you know, I think uh, you you, out, you gotta evaluate. You know, it's, mm. I tell people it's we'd all like five star talent, but you know, I want two star uh, work ethic. I think if you get that, you know, and then and a lot of our guys, I had some guys, we've had a lot of NFL guys come back through the um, weight room the last, starting to come back the last couple of weeks. And you look at them, I mean, some were two stars, three stars. And I think biggest thing is they want to, I mean, the and go through the process. I think TCU is built, you know, because even as a defensive head coach, that's at least what they call me, I think we had 12 offensive linemen in the league last year. And so, uh, you know, I think, I'm all in. When I can be out in the off season, I'm out in the off season. I think some of us, you know, we, we take things like we're the CEO, and I've always felt like, you know, I, I'm going to use every day that they give me to make sure I develop our guys and do it. And I think it's it's proven itself going forward that we could do that. And so, uh, and I'm not. That's the part of my job I like the most, really, to be honest with you, is being able to develop and and take guys that maybe some people said they never have an opportunity and give them an opportunity to get into camp and make it. So. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the fun part. I get a kick out of it, too. I get a kick out of seeing these kids that have played a completely different position that you'll look at and say, I don't know, I think you play linebacker. And then I'll watch the dude go play linebacker. Ty Summers is an example of this for me, right? Yeah. Um, another example of this for me would be LJ Collier. Like, I'm looking at these guys. How do you evaluate those players before they even get to campus? Well, you just have to, you have to, 
you have to think outside the box, mm. you know. And, and when we first started, we couldn't get defensive linemen. So mm. I was going to have to go and if I wanted the kind of guys we wanted to be able to play with, I was going to have to go recruit other positions that were more athletic than the guys that were recruitable at the time that people said were defensive linemen. LJ was a tight end. You know, you take a Jerry Hughes who was a running back. You know, we used to be, I think, I think it was 2005 or somewhere around there where I think our out of our top 11 defensive linemen, eight had been tailbacks in high school. <laughs> and so, you know, that's how you – but you have to have then an off season that you, you have a strength coach and a program you know that will get them bigger and stronger so they can play that position and do all of it. And so uh, it has to be a complete plan. They're just – it's not – any part of that circle when you're trying to develop that that falls apart or doesn't it's it's got a weak point it's, it's not going to allow it to go forward and we've been able to perfect uh, when a kid comes in if he stays within the process and goes through the maturation process of growing up stronger faster and if he has the ability i think that's what people understand it's it's just being able to see the ability i didn't see jerry hughes play defensive end time except what it was the last year we could be in the spring mm. he was at a practice i saw him one down they put him over there for some reason and I saw him turn the corner they run a counter and he's he sunk his hips and chased it and you see you know and we were there actually to see two other guys mm -hmm. I said I don't care about the center I don't care about the linebacker that's the only guy I want to recruit and you know now 11 he's still in the leagues going on 11 12 years now so uh you know those be able to see guys be able to go forward and then them to tell their story you know I get to you know, again, too much credit, I think, on that. It's it's still about the process, how my assistants evaluate because they bring them here, how you do things, and and then how, how it does the system once we get them there, from academics, how working towards the graduation, the small classroom size at TCU, to Donnie Summers in the weight room, to everybody that touches them. I think people understand if, if there's a cancer somewhere in there, they, you know, they don't like kids or they're not part of it, that's, that's a problem. And so we've got a great – we got a great program going on at, at all levels of, of our program that 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 love being around kids. So you're beginning to recruit like one of these quote unquote five star factories, though, coach, because I look at a guy like Marcel Brooks and that was a dude that I mean, he's got a national title ring and I love watching him come out of Flower Mound. You got a dude like Shadrach Banks who is going to play some linebacker for you. If I'm in fact, he looks pretty good so far. OK, I've seen well, and around, see, so. that's the thing. Like those two are examples because correct me if I'm wrong. One's playing wide receiver that was playing linebacker. One's playing linebacker playing wide receiver. Yep. How do you convince the kids who are blue chip recruits to follow you on? Well, it's easier now. Okay. <laughs> uh, because you know you have history. Okay. That when you move somewhere, they they can see themselves being that. You know, there's history to be able to do that, and so in Shadrick's you know case, you you we've had about all of our linebackers never played linebacker in high school. They mm. were safeties or they were running backs or they and that's what Shadrick is. He was a running back mm. slash inside H, H back type of guy. But, and you know, he's a lot like Zach Evans. In fact, mm. though, out of North shore, they're both really smart dudes. He, and a little bit of conversation talking about football. He doesn't get, uh, he doesn't really get distracted real quickly. Like a young, a lot of young guys do now, you know, when we get into camp, it'll go a lot faster. Uh, but it's it's been fun. It's been fun. You know, it's everybody has a lot more fun when you're working with a better pe piece of clay, right, <laughs> before you fold, when you know yes, that they sir. have all the different elements to be somebody. And then it's our job not to screw them up. And so, you know, it's, you know, hopefully we'll keep doing what we do want to get us to is we keep recruiting where we have to have less and less guys that you already know what exactly they are when they get there. You know, that's what we had to do a long time ago. And we still do it a little bit, but we don't have to do it as much. Zach Evans is absolutely one of those guys for me. Uh, is the guy that I've been very excited to see. And what I got to see last year, I really was enthusiastic about. What do you expect from him in 2021? Well, you know, it's, he, he made the academic Big 12 all on a roll. He's a 375 GPA. Uh, him and the rest of the running backs, I think, you know, one of the things people are going to find out about us is that because we have four guys that are, are pretty good, really pretty good players, uh, not as many carries. Now, that may hurt a guy a little bit. As far as you know, you got to see those numbers, but over a four-year uh, run, mm -hmm. you also take less pounding, and so guy when he gets to be a junior or senior, he has the opportunity to be a lot healthier going into the league, and that's what Zach has. And you know, again, a guy that he's done all that. It's like a D. Winters that was a, uh, a safety running back wide receiver at little two A school Burton, and you you know you change him around, and, and but they they have things in common. They love the game. 
and they're, they're smart players on the field and academically. And so it's, as a coach, it's just so much easier to coach guys like that. And Zach's one of those guys that, you know, came with a history of, well, he didn't, we haven't seen any of that at, with Zach there. He's been, he's been, he works hard. He loves being, he's a great practice player. Uh, academically, obviously, we just talked about how he's done school and done things. And so when you have all those kind of things, uh, which he obviously, because he graduated early from high school, you knew he was. Uh, he just needed, and one of the reasons why he, he chose TCU, he needed, he wanted to go somewhere like we've been. We've been there now 24 years, that there was some consistency. That's what he was looking for, some consistency in a program so he could he could navigate and become who he wants to become. And I think that's one of the positives of TCU, the way we've had is that you have the consistency to be able to move forward with it. Yeah, Coach, I think that's testament to the environment that you created over time, and Zach is evidence of that. Uh, I want to switch gears to what I think are a few more, well, fun questions. What was the last job you had before being a coach? Before I being a coach? Yes, sir. Um, I think I was the uh, I was a bartender in college. <laughs> oh, yeah? That's how you made it through. I wasn't on scholarship. I had academic scholarships. So. Is this Junction City or is this? Manhattan. Wow. Yep. Hey, down Aggieville. Yep. Did you like that job? Mother's Worry was the name of the bar, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you do whatever you can because you got a free sandwich at the end of the night. So I got something to eat and I got tips. I mean, I was a terrible bartender to be honest with you. <laughs> a terrible bartender. Football player. I no. was a good. I was good at talking to people. I wasn't good at the right mixes. So. <laughs> I can pour your beer. That's about it. Yeah, I mean, let's see. That was only forty years ago. So. <laughs> well, no, but that. I mean. That is a big part of who you are, I think, is these little things that come up uh, that you have to do to get where you're going. So yeah. I appreciate that, Coach. Coach, so, uh, last thing before I let you go. I put together what I thought of as an all-time Big 12 team. I would like you to take a look at it. Tell me what you think. And tell me who I missed. You know, there's so many good players that played in the league. I mean, everybody that you have on here are, are all great players be honest with you you know um he didn't play in the league but he played at tcu a, mm. a guy like lt you know if you just they had you know did they play at tcu or did they play in the big 12 well that did they play the, in the big 12 but because you had an argument that i can't ignore with lt <laughs> yeah yeah and so you know we've had some really good players um uh, but yeah it's i mean i think jason i think jason verrett corner i think mm. was i mean our for any of our first rounders i think especially the way he he played Jerry, Jerry Hughes didn't play in the league. Neither, you know, he didn't play in the league, but but uh, Jason Verrett did, just at TCU and a couple of our offensive linemen. Marcus Cannon's won three Super Bowls, uh, but again, he was right before uh, we went in the conference. He was 2010 because this was his 11th season. So, we've had guys I think they were good enough to be able to play, to be part of that group. Coach uh, Jason Verrett put the fear of, of of everybody into me, man. Like that dude on the corner. It's like, hey, why are we still throwing over there? Let, let, let's not. And this was, I want to say, 2013, because uh, I, I come up watching watching your team enter the league and then watch your team take over the league. Uh, I'm wishing, I wish you guys would do something like that this year. You got a bunch of dudes that I really love watching in high school. You got a bunch of kids that I'm really rooting for. Zach, Max, Tay, QJ. I mean, how do you feel about your team? Well, yeah, I, like I've said, you know, out in the deals, you know, great chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were younger. Now we're gonna. We got a chance to be older. Um, you were three points from an Iowa State team. You know, it's really the only game that you weren't uh, really in. I didn't think we played very well at West Virginia of the four losses. Kansas State probably should have won. Mm -hmm. And so, if you look, uh, if you look at it, you I think you have a chance. And you know, a lot of these teams have you know the super. They have guys coming back, but I think we have we have a I think a chance for our ceiling to be a lot higher because of the potential because we. A lot of guys that haven't played now, mm -hmm. you got to recreate. You got to re uh, replace three really good guys on defense uh, that are they're in camps, and then two tight ends. But outside of that, I, I think we have an opportunity to to move forward. So very cool. Well, TCU coach Gary Patterson, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you, coach. See ya. Yes, sir. I'm here with West Virginia Mountaineer running back Lady Brown and defensive lineman Dante Stills. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Great. How are you? I'm good, money. I'm good. All right. So. First, I want to acknowledge how fresh y'all look. Both of y'all showed up in full suits. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate, appreciate What inspired it. the choice? Um, 
just come best dress and do your yeah, best. Yeah, really like, best dress. Yeah. You look good. You do good. You look good. You play good. I wanted the dark blue, but I just went to a, a little lighter blue. So. No, I like it, right, and I like right. the blue tie too. Appreciate it. And ain't no clip-ons in here. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, nah. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm saying though, and we got earrings in, and I got. Well, all right, so I got to ask, who do your hair? My mom's friend. Oh, for real? Yeah. She she retwisted. Retwisted, okay. braided, all that. How long she says it take to get the? It retwisted? take. I mean, for me, it probably take an hour and a half. Hour, hour and a half. Hour fifteen for her to well twist them and then yeah braid them. Man, bro, I'm getting. It's up quick. It ain't, it ain't nah nah. See see my partner does it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And my whole head take about three hours. Three hours. So I yeah nah I take it down on his ponytail and you'll see. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, like it's it's all there. Plus you gotta see the scout. Oh you gotta right, see the right. scout. Nah. All right. Letty, I just talked to Coach Brown. Mm. Talk about the season you had last year. What he expects you to do this year. What do you expect for yourself? Um, nothing less. Mm. I expect me to do what I did last year, but even more. Like you can't do what I did last year and take a step back. Mm. You gotta take steps forward. Especially like for me, like I feel like I haven't been getting the respect that I deserve, so I'm kind of playing with that chip on my shoulder at all times. That's what's up. Dante, how about you? Um, just do better than last year. You know, last mm-hmm. year um, I had a good year, um, like technique-wise and like my, my footwork and stuff like that, but like it didn't show up on the stat sheet, which down me, you, you played bad. It just like, you know, just stat, you know, stay come and go. But uh, for me, I, I'm just trying to be the best, you know, the best in the country. That's kind of like my goal, my mindset. What can Jared Daigie do to build on 2020? I feel like he had a pretty good season last year, but if he take more control of the offense this year, we'll be unstoppable. Yeah, I mean, I agree because like I'm I'm on the opposite side, so like I, I seen in practice, he's definitely taking more control, stuff like that. So like the, you know, last year, you know, I feel like this year he's going to be a, a, a great player for us. You know, he's. He don't make a lot of plays, cause people to make plays, put the ball in the right position, and just be a, a, a good QB for us. Sure. At, I've been to Millen Pupscar, been there a couple of times, right? And one of the things I'm always impressed about is how loud it gets when it's full. What's it like for y'all to know that it's going to get back to that going into 2021? Chills. <laughs> just imagine a stadium packed out. Any game, night game, afternoon game, morning game, it's packed out. Fans yelling, fans screaming, and they here to cheer, cheer, on, cheer us on. So, like, me standing in that tunnel, like, I get chills. Dante, what you got? So I'm definitely excited. You know, it's, it's definitely a, a, a hostile environment, you know, mm. for sure. It's it, it gets rowdy. People, the fans start talking. They start booing and stuff like that. So I'm definitely excited for the atmosphere, for sure. Nah, man, like, it's not just the crowd. It's a hostile environment right. because there's ice on the field and it's snowing. And, <laughs> and don't, Virginia, no, I'm about to say, don't, don't, nobody, <laughs> don't, don't nobody or nothing like you up there yeah, that ain't already West Virginia, up there. It's a whole different for sure. Nah, man. All right, so take a look at these. This is the defense. This is the offense of what I think is the best all-time team in Big 12 history. So if I miss somebody, let me know who I miss, but tell me who you're putting on. Carl Joseph's not on here. Carl Joseph is not on there. Who are you taking Tavon. off? Tavon. Tavon. Tavon? Who Tavon. are you taking off? I'm going to take off one of these older I mean, cats that I don't really know. I, I so mean, I I'm think Tavon, I've, not, I've never seen nobody like Tavon ever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I take, I would say CD. Even though he, I mean, I don't know, the, I don't really don't know the other guy, so I'll put him off. I'll take him off, Mark Andrews. Tight end? Yeah. Just because just okay. I don't. Okay. okay. All right, I'm going to take off Derek Johnson for Kyle Joseph. All right, so Mark Andrews won a Mackey Award as best tight end in the country 2017. Oh, he's tight end. Okay, uh, and I get to Tavon. Man, Coach Brown came through here talking about where's Tavon. Yeah. <laughs> he also was like, where's David Long? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. We forgot one. We forgot one. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that dude right there, I ain't never. Listen, every time I, so it was my freshman year when I played with him. I tell you what, he did not stop. Like every play was, he, I'm in the backfield. Like it's crazy. Oh, my, my freshman year, I played running back. He played Mike linebacker. 
We tried to bully the freshmen. We fought every camp practice. Every camp practice. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, though, because, A, you showing some heart there, mm-hmm. and, and, B, no, nah, I'm the alpha on this team. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm with that. I'm with that. All right, so who we replacing to get Carl Joseph on the team? Derek Johnson. Derek, you said – you ever seen that man play linebacker? No, I, I said I was going to get one of these older players that I don't know off the board. <laughs> that, that's what I said. That's what I said. Okay. All I, right. I haven't seen him play. I don't know what he, he do he, on the field. He, he, he hunting like Carl Joseph. He a linebacker. He Mike. All right, but there's other he linebackers Mike. on here, though. Yeah, but you picked him. Yeah, I'm still picking But pick you him. picked him. I'm still picking him. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so you want a 4-2-5. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, obviously Vince Young, you know, he's that dude. Adrian Pearson. But I really don't – I mean, the only only lineman I really know is Trent Williams that I know of, like, right now. I mean, there's a lot of good old linemen I went against, though. A lot. Nah, man. Like, this this is going back to, like, the 90s. Yeah, this is Mm -hmm. going back. Yeah. And then I got to remember – most of y'all born in the late 90s. Yeah, so it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to like, yeah, exactly. I'm, you know, I'm 34. Y'all got me out here feeling old. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Talking about, I don't know these cats. I'm like, yo, he played like 10 years ago. <laughs> nah. You know? Like, Justin Blackman was over there, like, winning back-to-back Olympic yeah. awards. Mm-hmm. Let's say, I definitely recognize him. CD, obviously. Anderson. Like, yeah, Anderson Pearson. Vince Young. But the O-Lyman and, like, yeah. I mean, this is a good list, though. I mean, it's like you, like, you know more about this era than we do. So. No, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But I also appreciate y'all picking out the folks that y'all like, Carl, David, and really setting forward a case for them because that's what I asked for. Uh, Letty Brown, Dante Stills, thank you so much. This is mm-hmm. fun. I'm glad that y'all are willing to play along. I'm here with West Virginia head coach Neil Brown. Coach Brown, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you being here, Coach. Uh, I want to start with this. You got a dynamic tailback. And Letty Brown returning, second leading rusher in this conference last year. How much of the load are you looking for him to carry? Well, he's definitely our most experienced running back, uh, most experienced skill position player. He's been our most productive player on the offensive side of the ball. Um, and I think for him, it's to continue to grow, to continue to climb. And I think his best is still in his future. Um, he ran the ball really well inside the tackles last year. thought he did an um, elite job of breaking tackles. I think he can be a better outside runner. I thought he did a good job of catching the ball out of the backfield and running routes, split out. I think he can continue to improve, and we've got to do a better job of utilizing him in that role. Um, and he also can do a better job in blitz protection. So I think there's real growth there for him. He had a tremendous offseason. He had a great spring practice. Our, our expectations for him are extremely high. How does it feel to know who your guy is at quarterback going into preseason? Well, it's a benefit for sure. Um, Jared Dagey has, has played a lot of uh, football. Uh, Bowling Green, and then here, you know, he's played 13 games. He's been successful. He's won. Um, you know, he was toward the top of the Big 12 in passing last year. He's cerebral. He understands the game. Uh, real student. Dad, uh, you know, father, very successful high school coach in the state of Texas. Um, and he's had a tremendous offseason. So I, I think that, that he's ready to step up. We need him to step up. Um, he played really well during the middle part of the season last mm. year. Um, was really effective. Uh, he didn't do anything to get us beat. You know, very low number of interceptions. We've got to be more accurate on the deep ball. You know, and then we've got to do a better job of moving in the pocket and, and not taking sacks. And he's capable of doing both. In this your second go around here in this league, what have you noticed as a head coach that you might not have noticed before? Well, the, the league is so different than when I was here as a coordinator in 10, 11, and 12. It was a high-scoring league, um, you know, ton of uh, – uh, pro quarterbacks in the league at that time. Um, the air raid and the spread offenses, defenses hadn't figured out exactly how to how to defend us yet. And so now, as you come back in this league, you know, um, there's been so much turnover coaching-wise. Mm. Um, and if you look at it, there's more defense being played in this league. Uh, some of the best defenses in the country last year were in the Big 12. Um, the also are also special teams are so much so much better than they were when I was here in 10, 11, and 12. And so the league's changed. Um, I think from top to bottom, the, it, it's extremely competitive. You know, I think that it's a tough nine-game stretch. And you play everybody, you see everybody every year. Um, there's, there hasn't been a whole lot of difference in, in really teams two through nine 
uh, during during my tenure here at West Virginia. And so, fortunately, we were able to move in 20. We moved from the bottom kind of to the middle. Now we got to take a significant step and move to the top tier of the league, and that's the goal. One of the things you were outstanding at last year is time in the secondary. Your guys were just amazing back there in really defending vertically. Mm -hmm. How do you teach them to do that? Well, you got to practice. You got to play the ball, and you know one of our one of our really objectives defensively is keep the ball in front of us mm -hmm. and and minimize explosive plays. Well, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing you got to do and to minimize explosive plays is you got to be able to tackle in space, yeah. uh, which we were really, really good tackling team last year. You got to get up pressure on the quarterback, which is something we've been able to do the last two years. Yeah. And you got to really train the guys to run the football. You know, if you do miss a tackle, you got to have somebody there to make it. Yeah. And so and in the secondary, um, you know, what we've done is we do a good job of mixing up coverages. But our, our objective is keep the ball in front of us. And our guys did a great job of that last year. And the expectation is we'd continue to do that. Coach, what was the last job you had before going into coaching? Last job, I was I sold advertising for a magazine, and I wasn't very good at. It. That's why I'm in coaching. You know, it's like uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, coach, before I let you go, I put together what I thought was the all-time best offense and defense to play in the Big Twelve. Okay. I would like you to take a look at it and tell me where I messed up and who you might add, who you might take off. So, you know, Des Bryant is one guy that jumps out to me. Okay. Oklahoma State. At quarterback, it's so hard. <laughs> Good luck, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it's – I mean, where do you – who do you leave off? You know, it, it's so hard. So, I don't envy you on that. Um, you know, receivers, there's been so many too. But Des Bryant sticks out. Crabtree sticks mm. out. You know, Tavon Austin's got to be on it. Tavon Austin has the best college <sighs> – Tavon Austin has the best college highlight tape of anybody that maybe has ever played. Coach, I come up an Oklahoma fan. You ain't got to tell me. <laughs> I, was, I was around for that. Yeah, yeah no, because uh, argument I made with myself is Justin Blackman won that award twice, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then just seeing yeah. what I got to see from him. He had a great year. Mm. You, know, um, you know, our guy David Long was so productive in this league, too. If you look at that, he was defense player of the year. Multiple years, first year, first team all conference. He was a really good player. And um, a heck of a nice guy. Like, yeah. yeah, that was my mm -hmm. favorite thing about David. Yeah, he always had time too. Yeah, I mean, you got a, it's hard to take anybody off. No, but I, hey, I appreciate David Long getting a look here from you because I, I argue with myself a lot over this, and I think that's kind of the point is to say yeah. oh, this league is. has been good for twenty five years. League's been league's been played at an extremely high level for a long time. Very much so. Coach Neil Brown, thank you so much, yeah, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it.